I have a Craig K4 Master System, this jig. And I'm building some cabinets. I want to have some more um, out feed, in feed, side support for this jig. Unfortunately, none of the material I have is right. If you measure this to the table there, it measures 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch. Unfortunately, none of the sheet goods I have add up to one inch. I've got 18 and six mil, which gives me 24. So it's a 1.5 short. Even the 12 mil material that I've got is, well, actually 12 mil, it's not half inch. So what I was gonna do, put a layer of plywood and a layer of MDF, but this is just a little bit under. Now, 1.4 isn't that big a deal. In the grand scheme of things, I guess it's better than the one inch drop off the sides, but I want to do a little bit better than that. So I'm still going to use the uh, MDF as the top layer, but instead I'm going to cut strips and stand them up going that way. And they will need to be 25.4 minus 6, which comes to 19.4. This video was done using a minimal set of machines just the sort of machines you'd need to make a bunch of cabinets with a pocket hole jig, which is why I'm not using the thickness to get the exact size. I wanted to make it a fairly close fit, so on some scrap plywood I did multiple test cuts until I was happy with the fit. After ripping, I used the crosscut sled to cut the plywood and MDF to length. Everything was attached with glue and brads, though if you don't have a nail gun, clamps or screws are more than okay. I was just impatient and didn't want to clamp. So these are now dried and cleaned up. I was going to put some dowels in to sort of lock this all together so it's stabilized, but I found that kind of doesn't matter. If I crank down my tail vise really hard, it will bow up slightly. But the solution to that I found was just not to crank it down. Um, it really only needs to be snugged up and then all the force is kind of going down anyway, so it, it just doesn't move. So I'm going to skip that because it's unnecessary complication. One extra complication that eh, may be necessary, maybe not, is I'm going to add a piece of scale that I've got. I don't know what this is left over from, doesn't really matter. Zero to 315. I'm referencing that off uh, Mark C on the Craig K4. I think it's the same on the K3 and K5. Uh, and I'm just going to stick that down here. So I need to cut that at 24 millimeters. This isn't so much as a measurement system as a reference system. So as I'm going along, if I can see that that's registering at, I don't know, say 25 millimeters, I know that if I go to 50 millimeters, I've gone 25 mil across and can put a new one. The actual numbers don't matter for pocket holes, but it doesn't hurt, it gives me a reference system. So I'm just going to stick that on like so with a few drops of CA. This was self-adhesive, but I don't actually know what I was using it on. And the adhesive has worn off. Uh, Double-sided tape would be another good option, but I don't know where mine is at the moment. So it's a bit cold. I'm going to walk away and let this cure. And then I'm going to do some tests with it. Before I did testing, I wanted a good way to clamp the cabinet parts after making the pocket holes. So I wanted to make some corner clamping blocks. This is just 18mm MDF. It's rigid enough and it doesn't need to be super durable as it's really just a reference. I used the factory edges of the MDF which were nice and square. If you've got access to a drill press that would be better but it can be done with just a cordless drill, a 40mm or so, forcing a bit and some patience. 
The cut surfaces don't need to be critically flat or square, so they can just be done with a jigsaw. Then I could give everything a test. Sure enough, spacing stuff evenly was fairly easy, though I wasn't really sure what number I was picking for my larger spacing. So these worked pretty well. I think I can make them a little bit better by having just a small lip uh, on these two edges here so that they could hook on uh, and sort of hold the jig in position right up against the edge, but we'll see. I'll probably use these in conjunction with pipe clamps. Uh, these for sort of the setup and then the pipe clamps to actually clamp everything. The little platform works great for the Craig jig. If you're interested in this sort of cabinet making stuff, don't forget to tune in next week when I'll have the first part of this cabinet making series out. You can see all the melamine over in the corner there. If you check the description below, there is a link to the PDF for the plans cutting template for these uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe Ugh, that felt dirty just saying that thanks for watching